2023 is almost upon us and there are a lot of new motorcycles that you should be excited about. And we're not just talking about bold new graphics from Suzuki. Let's check out the most anticipated bikes for 2023. We can't talk about new motorcycles that are coming down the pipeline and not mention the new Honda CB750 Hornet. Taking its namesake from not one, but two highly esteemed motorcycles from Honda's history, the venerable CB750, which was produced for nearly three decades, sold a bunch and bankrupted or nearly bankrupted brands like Harley-Davidson and Triumph following its domination in the 70s, and the Honda Hornet, a 919cc inline four roadster that was ahead of the curve in the early 2000s before the UJM Neo Retro resurgence that fully took over in the 2010s. My point being is Honda really needs to come correct with the new 2023 Hornet with a motorcycle that can fill the shoes of its predecessors. Upon first looking at the new Hornet, you can see Honda was going for a more hyper naked style motorcycle compared to the original Hornet. The UJM archetype CB750 or even their contemporary middleweight CB650. It looks like Honda is taking some hints from KTM or Yamaha with its edgy stripped back angular naked motorcycle. Outside of the looks, the big feature is the 270 degree parallel twin. Again, you can see the Yamaha inspiration there, but it isn't just Yamaha who have been prioritizing their parallel twin engines lately. Most manufacturers are opting for twin engines over screaming inline fours for increased torque and usable power. They're also likely cheaper and easier to produce, and Honda is smart to use the 270 degree crank as well. It makes for a much more enjoyable riding experience with a great sound and character compared to those 180 degree snoozers. The 2023 Hornet is making a claimed 91 horsepower at 9500 RPM and peak 55 foot pounds of torque at 7250 RPM. Clearly this bike is meant for fun, peppy, urban riding which the market has shown is the style of bikes many riders are gravitating towards. The Hornet has updated tech with the TFT Dash, switchable ride modes, switchable traction control, and switchable engine brake levels as well. The Hornet will be available in the 2023 model year for European markets for £6,999. That is a very competitive price, even if the styling looks like a CB500. It is still yet to be announced if it will make it to the US. But I can almost guarantee you it will. Interestingly, despite the industry interest in producing more torque forward twin engine motorcycles, Kawasaki currently manufactures the ZX25R, a 250cc inline four sport bike for sale in certain Asian markets and has plans to build upon that platform for the North American and European markets with the ZX4R. A high revving 400cc inline four motorcycle, the ZX25R was originally designed as a sort of power displacement tax loophole in order for Kawasaki to sell a bike that makes more power with a smaller displacement, they had to build a short stroke high revving bike that could just make more power by revving so damn high. Whereas a 400cc inline four for American markets feels like an attempt to just sell the novelty to infatuate those baby street squids who want an inexpensive bike they can rev to the moon while still barely crest the speed limit, or maybe as a throwback to the small screaming inline four motorcycles from the 90s like the BR250RR or the ZX2R. Kawasaki hasn't made an official press release yet, so exact specs and pricing isn't available to us, but after much speculation from motorcycle journalists online, the rumors of its existence were confirmed when Kawasaki submitted VINs for the ZX4R. Could this be a good motorcycle for beginners who want an inline four sound but know that they probably shouldn't get a 600 or maybe a dedicated track day toy? Maybe, but its existence seems a little unnecessary in my opinion. Regardless, people are definitely hyped for it, so I guess we'll just have to see how it's received once it debuts. Another motorcycle that has been the subject to much speculation is the Yamaha R9. This bike might not be available in the 2023 model year, and you might be thinking, isn't this an official 2023 bike? Well, maybe not, but also an R9 would be far more exciting than something like a 230cc Kawasaki Supermoto, another freaking ADV bike, or something from Suzuki with different color options, or another thinly veiled update for a motorcycle in the 2023 model year. So while not officially announced, we can confirm that Yamaha has issued a trademark for the name R9 at the same time they secured the trademark for an R7, a fully fared parallel twin motorcycle with a torquey power plant plucked straight from the naked MT-07. The R7 ultimately displaced the R6, a sport bike with a screaming 599cc inline four as Yamaha's middleweight sport bike, and it's highly probable that an R9, a fully fared sport bike using Yamaha's spicy crossplane triple from the MT-09 and XSR900 platforms, 
will follow with the similar trajectory. Because as the lineup stands right now, the R7 makes a pretty tame 74 horsepower and 50 foot-pounds of torque, and the R1, Yamaha's top-tier 1,000cc race machine, makes 200 horsepower. If an R9 made use of the existing 890cc triple-cylinder engine from the NT platform, it would make around 117 horsepower and 69 nice foot-pounds of torque, depending on how it was tuned compared to the MT. This would make it a perfect stepping stone in Yamaha's sport bike category, bridging the gap between the R7 and the R1. And currently, the MT-09 is the only bike in the MT line that doesn't have a fully fared sport bike equivalent. The R3, R7, and R1 all share DNA with the MT-03, MT-07, and MT-10. Plus, I think there are even smaller bikes in Europe that follow the same pattern, like the MT-09, MT-10, and R1. It is safe to assume that the R9 would be outfitted with the same features, like adjustable suspension, quick shift, 6 axis IMU, and so on. I'm definitely going to keep my ear to the ground for the R9 as I'm sure people will go nuts for it. Also, the new MT-09 has an updated frame and I've heard nothing but good things about the MT-09 SP. So Yamaha, get cracking on that R9 because you'll sell a bunch of them. I'd like to take a second to shout out the sponsor of today's video. It's our community over at Yamanube.co. If you like what we do here on the channel, the easiest way to support us is by heading over to Yamanube.co in the link in the description and signing up for a membership. Membership perks include access to our member-exclusive Discord server, behind-the-scenes content, and live stream content as well, like the weekly YNGP podcast and the YamCam, and discounts on gear over at shop.yamanube.co. Best of all, every membership earns automatic monthly entries to win one of our giveaway motorcycles. We've given away dozens of motorcycles in the last few years and it's crazy to think about but it's one of the coolest things we do expert bikes beginner bikes and everything in between if you'd like to support our channel and earn some of these perks head over to yamanube.co join our community and sign up for the 2023 model year, BMW is bestowing upon us a brand new updated s 1000 R. as if all the Beamer boys out there needed any more reason to never shut up about their bikes. For 2023, BMW has brought in a bunch of technology from their m 1000 R race bike and distilled it down into the S model. In terms of looks, the s 1000 R now has some hokey aerodynamic winglets for even more marginal performance gains. Gotta get those World Superbike homologations, baby. The engine has been modified with a revised cylinder head, again pulled from the M1000RR, to improve power across the rev range, although the power figures remain the same at 205 horsepower and 83 foot-pounds of torque. There is also an updated airbox with shortened intake length for better performance at high revs. There have also been some slight tweaks to the frame geometry to improve flexibility, handling, and stability. The changes are so granular that I'm falling asleep even looking at it, so I'm staying general. An extra tooth on the rear sprocket leads to quicker acceleration and improvements to the quick shift programming makes clutchless shifting smoother. In typical BMW fashion, there are a litany of additional options for riders that want the full BMW treatment, like semi-active suspension or carbon fiber farkles. You know Norton, that really old English motorcycle brand that made old-timey cafe bikes and also raced, I guess? Well, they make bikes again, which is crazy. I've also known of Norton as this vague mythological idea that you always hear about when doing historical deep dives but have never actually come face to face with. Well, that might all change soon as they were purchased in 2020 by the Indian TVS Motor Co. So sort of following the trend of defunct brands being brought back by overseas companies, nothing really new at this point, but as of now, the design and manufacturing is still done at Norton's new facility in the UK. So let's take a look at these bikes. They have the new 2023 Norton Commando 961 that comes in both SP and CR trims. The Commando is clearly pulling from their classic British cafe racer heritage. The SP model comes with the wide flat handlebars and the CR has clip-ons for a more committed riding position. Ah, right, CR stands for cafe racer. I know it's a pretty apparent thing, but I did not recognize that right away. These bikes are powered by a 961cc air-cooled push rod parallel twin engine that makes 77 horsepower and 50 foot-pounds of torque. Norton didn't spare much with the suspension or braking components on this bike as it utilizes adjustable Olin suspension in the front and rear and Brembo brakes all around. Both the SP and CR trims for the Norton Commando 961 cost just shy of 17,000 pounds or right around $18,500. Norton is also bringing a super sport to the table, which is a little surprising considering their cafe racer heritage. The V4 SV makes use of a liquid cool 1200cc V4 that makes a claimed 185 horsepower and 92 foot pounds of torque. Norton is making a clear dig at the Daytona by saying the V4 S4 is the only super bike still made in the UK. 
Come on, Speed Triple 1200RR? Pretty similar specs. Honestly, it looks like a pretty bespoke bike. It has plenty of carbon fiber, Brembo brakes, fully adjustable Olins, a quick shifter, and a whole suite of rider aids. And there's always more than meets the eye, but I think it's cool for an Indian-owned company to make high-end bikes instead of tiny, budget-friendly commuter bikes. From what I can tell, the V4S4 will cost 44,000 pounds or $54,000 assuming the UK doesn't pick another prime minister and implode. Another bike that people are excited for is the Moto Guzzi V100 Mandelo. This bike is their new kind of naked sport touring bike that is by far one of the most modern production bikes that Guzzi has ever made. I'm actually pretty sure the V100 Mandelo is the first liquid-cooled production bike they ever made. This motorcycle is actually pretty neat because in an era of neo-retro heritage bike, the Mandelo accomplishes that same vibe in its own way. It doesn't look like a UJM or a bobber, but like an 80s sport touring bike like a BMW K100 or even kind of like an old Kawasaki GPZ900 with its big uniform side panels that connect from the front fairing all the way to the seat and shaft drive. It's a beautiful bike. The V100 uses a liquid-cooled 1042cc transverse V-twin that is making 115 horsepower and 78 foot-pounds of torque. It is fully adjustable all-in suspension with semi-active rebound and compression damping and Brembo brakes. Plus, it has all the technological creature comforts that every sport tourer needs like cruise control, electronically adjustable windscreen, heated grips, and a bi-directional quick shifter. The V100 Mandelo is a really cool motorcycle that makes sport touring seem a little less dorky. The S model has an MSRP of $17,490. Kind of spicy. Now, what if I told you that right around for $5,000, you could purchase a playful urban commuter that was capable of light off-roading? That there was an A2-compliant 400-class motorcycle that was made in India and designed for the budget-conscious rider with an eye for style? You would say, yeah, yeah, I know. It's the Sport Pillin 401. Oh, right, the Sport Pillin 401. No, that's not the motorcycle we're talking about today. Damn it. I'm talking about the Scram 411 from Royal Enfield. Royal Enfield has been living their truth lately in an attempt to become the indisputable choice for new riders who want stylish motorcycles at incredibly affordable prices. And they ain't made in China neither. Scram 411 is no exception. Based on the Himalayan adventure bike, the Scram is a scrambler-style motorcycle catered more towards city riding than adventuring. Any motorcycle with such an approachable price point is expected to have shortcomings, but Royal Enfield has managed to excite some riders in a way where these inadequacies are easily overlooked. The Scram pulls the same 411cc engine from the Himalayan, but it is still making only 24 horsepower and 24 foot-pounds of torque, but stripped of the excess 30 pounds of adventure gear, the Scram is a little more willing to play with those modest power numbers. The front tire was taken down to 19 inches instead of 21 for better handling on the pavement. The Scram still has a decent 7 inches of suspension travel and a skid plate, so it shouldn't feel all too bad about getting a little dirty on some forest roads. And remember guys, this bike costs just 5100 bucks. We have a whole video dedicated to Josh's experience on the Scram 411 press launch if you want to hear more about this bike in detail. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. What bike are you most excited for? Let me know down below. As always, subscribe if you dig the content, and I'll see you later. Fact. Canadians say sorry so much that a law passed in 2009 declaring that an apology can't be used as evidence to an admission of guilt. Goodbye. Well, look at you. You've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. You should consider yourself pretty lucky because I have curated this one right over here for you to continue watching. It's probably just as good as the one you just saw. Unless you hated the one you just saw. I don't know, maybe leave me a comment down below about how you much you hated it as well too. Or just keep watching this one. Make sure you keep watching Yammy Noob. Don't forget to keep watching Yammy Noob. That's the most important thing. Keep watching Yammy Noob.